One of the more interesting races in North Texas is for House District 33, where Katrina Pearson, a former spokeswoman for former President Donald Trump, is trying to unseat incumbent Justin Holland. Pearson is endorsed by Governor Greg Abbott, Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick, and Attorney General Ken Paxton. Both Pearson and Holland are far apart on some key issues, including school choice and Paxton's impeachment. From downtown Plano to Rockwall and Heath. Welcome to the Texas House District 33, a conservative district that's now on the political radar of Republicans from across the Lone Star State. We want to turn people into our voters. And we Incumbent Justin Holland pushes his experience and leadership positions in the Republican majority in the House and that he's lived in the community for 40 years. Somebody that owns a business and runs a business that's part of uh, a local church here that has been involved in local politics prior to being in office in the legislature. Somebody that has given back to uh, the, the community. Wow, thank you so much for coming tonight. His challenger, Katrina Pearson, pushes her conservative values and says voters in the district asked her to run. Uh, many of them have watched me on national television for the better part of 15 years fighting for conservative values. And the incumbent, unfortunately, has abandoned the district over the years. And if elected, Pearson says her top three priorities include election integrity, border security, and school choice. Taxpayer funded education savings accounts, or ESAs, also known as school vouchers. Holland says his top three priorities, if elected, are property tax cuts, border security, and public education. Last fall, he was among 21 House Republicans who joined Democrats to vote against Governor Abbott's school choice plan. And I support and endorse Katrina Pearson. To After the March 5th primary, when Pearson and Holland ended up in the runoff, Governor Abbott endorsed her and started campaigning for her. Given all the fact that he's been out there campaigning for your opponent and against you, you know, would you stay? Would your vote stay the same given yes. all that's happened? Why? Yes, because my vote has always been that way. I've never seen an ESA plan that I liked or made good logistical sense. We don't need to come up with a new government entitlement program costing anywhere from 500 million to two billion dollars that only 50,000 kids can take advantage of. Virtually nobody in my district would have been able to take advantage of it, even if I was for the plan. Uh, and so people don't understand what the bill was we voted on versus what's being said in the politics. Let me ask you about uh, school choice. Um, why do you support it uh, so, so much? And the one thing that we know, the true ticket out of poverty is a quality education. We know that education in Texas, in some areas, are very well, but not so much in others. This gives the opportunity for a low-income family or a single parent, like I was, the opportunity to put their child in the school of their choice, whether it be faith-based, a charter school, and I just think that's amazing. So many families want that opportunity, and in my district, 85% of the voters wanted it. In the March 5th primary, Abbott campaigned against 14 Republican incumbents and supported their challengers. Of those, seven beat the incumbent, and five ended up in a runoff. Holland is also fighting for his political career. A lot of my colleagues were taken out, and they're trying to take us out. And what do you think about that? It's horrible, because we're, we're losing democracy. How so? Because you can buy house seats. Is that what you'd say is happening? Well, I mean, I had $300,000 from a D.C. PAC spent against me uh, just on the issue alone. <laughs> what would you say? The PAC spent 300000 Okay. Well, he spent $1.3 just against me. And all of that money was all special interest. The PACs that are supporting me are absolutely on board with our values in the district. Pearson says she supports teacher pay raises. Absolutely. I think our teachers are very underpaid. The teachers in this district are actually on the lower end of the scale. And these are the people that spend the most time with our kids throughout the day, and they should be paid accordingly. She is noncommittal on whether school districts should receive more money per student, also called the basic allotment. Well, I'd have to look at all of the finance piece because what's coming in the next legislature is a school choice measure. Um, so when we see how all of that's going to work out, I'd be happy to support it if it's the right thing to do. Holland says he fully supports boosting taxpayer dollars for public education and teacher raises. Um, I can tell you right now, we need 
increase to the basic allotment. We need teacher pay increases. We need bonuses for teachers based on student achievement. If a kid is trapped in a failing school, then we should fix that school. The question occurs on adoption of the resolution. Does the record break required by the Constitution? The clerk bring the bill. Pearson says another reason she entered the race is because Holland voted to impeach Attorney General Ken Paxton, along with most of the Republicans and Democrats in the House. They failed to gather all the evidence. After a trial, the Republican majority in the Texas Senate acquitted Paxton of all of the articles of impeachment. Well, I thought it was wrong for a number of reasons. There was no due process, and I think the Senate trial uncovered a lot of the hastiness and um, the rushing of the process. And that's one thing that we believe as conservatives is due process, and the Attorney General was denied that. Seeing now that he was fully acquitted by the Senate, did that make you rethink your vote to impeach? No, because I believe that over politics and over party affiliation, we need to do what's right. I don't regret my vote. Last year, the families of the deadly mass shooting victims at Robb Elementary School in Uvalde pushed hard to raise the age for someone to buy an AR-style rifle from 18 to 21. That bill ultimately went nowhere, but Holland, who previously voted for constitutional carry, was among the Republicans to join Democrats to vote a bill out of committee to the full House. Oh, I felt it was the right thing to do. Um, I'm a gun owner myself. I own many guns. I carry a gun. You have to be 21 years old to drink. You have to be 21 years old to gamble. You have to be 21 years old uh, to purchase a pistol. Um, I felt like it is something that could have been... A, it, I was willing to be a part of the conversation is what I'm saying. Um, the district does not support any measure of gun control. Um, the district is very much constitutionally conservative.